Hello, my friend. It is I, Vadim. I bring you some fresh tech news. Shall we have a look? So, we know the price of the RTX 3000 series graphics cards now. It is $1400 for RTX 3090, $800 for 3080, $600 for 3070, and $400 for 3060. At least that is what the leaks are saying. It looks realistic to me though. What do you think? Oh, and that special NVIDIA 12-pin power cable was spotted in the wild. It is a Seasonic cable that has two 8-pin connectors on the PSU end and a single 12-pin connector that will go into your new NVIDIA GPU. This cable can deliver around 400 watts. It will be great if you only need one of these to power your graphics card. That would be perfect for tidy cable management inside the PC case. The fewer cables, the better. Part of the AMD roadmap was leaked. I hope the leaker will share the rest with us soon. But what can we see from this leak? Confirmation of AMD's plan to launch Zen 3 desktop CPUs in 2021 and a new kind of low-powered APUs with Navi2 graphics, codename Van Gogh. Most likely they will be a part of Ryzen 5000 series. TDP will range from 7.5 to 18 watts. But that is all in the future. Did you know that Ryzen 3000 series CPUs are getting more powerful and efficient thanks to a developer from Ukraine? Shout out to one Usmus. He created a utility software called Clock Tuner that is able to scan and identify the overclocking and undervolting capabilities of your Ryzen 3000 CPU. And he made it super easy. Just a few clicks and you can boost your performance. Gains are very significant in some cases, especially if you were lucky enough to get a good quality silicon in your CPU. Linus Tech Tips has a video showcasing this app, so go check it out if you want to see more. There's one more AMD piece for today, and it has something to do with Google Chromebooks. In case you didn't know, Chromebooks are selling very well. And guess what? Apparently there is a secret AMD APU named Lucien that is supposed to be an exclusive 8-core product for Google. Currently Google is working on support for AMD processors to either replace or launch them alongside Intel-powered Chromebooks. Either way, it is bad news for Intel. And great news for us, consumers. More competition is always better. Let's take a quick break. I've been a private Internet Access VPN customer for over two years now and enjoyed their service. That is why I decided to partner up with them to bring you a good deal. Why do I choose them? Because they don't keep logs, provide military-grade encryption, and blazing fast and limited download and upload speeds at a reasonable price. I use it for privacy and security, as well as to unblock content that is not available in my region. Check out their fast connection. This is my original speed with the VPN turned off. 180 megabits per second download and 60 megabits per second upload. Now watch what happens when I connect to the server on the other side of the planet and check again. As you can see the speed is similar to my local connection. I can't recommend it enough. Use my affiliate link in the description below to get a better deal with 77% off the price and extra 3 months for free. Back to the news. Nvidia quietly announced a new dedicated graphics solution for entry-level laptops. It is GeForce MX450. There will be a version with GDDR5 video memory as well as with GDDR6. TDP is 25 watts. Also, there is a GeForce MX430 on the horizon. Both GPUs are built on Turing architecture. Nintendo could be launching their new Switch Pro gaming console in early 2021 and it may use NVIDIA Tegra Xavier SoC. If that comes true, then it will be possible to bring 4K gaming to the Switch. Not in AAA titles, but some games with simpler graphics are a possibility. However, it is all rumors and speculation at the moment. Photos and specs for Google Pixel 5 and Pixel 4a 5G smartphones have leaked. It looks like both smartphones will be plastic and have a very similar design. So, what is inside Pixel 5? 4000 mAh battery, two cameras, standard and ultra-wide, Snapdragon 765G, 8GB of RAM, 90Hz display, 
and the fingerprint scanner on the back. Pixel 4a 5G shares the same 765G processor and has a couple of downgrades compared to Pixel 5. It will have a smaller 3800 mAh battery, 6GB of RAM and 60Hz display. It looks like Google will not be on the frontier of the cutting-edge mobile technology this year, but maybe that is the right move for them. Why should they put Snapdragon 865 in their phones when Pixel can take perfect pictures using 765G? What is there to do with that extra performance? Play games? Lately, I am more excited about smartphones that feature more of the essential features for a lower price. Flagships are not as exciting anymore in 2020. Well, maybe until I see iPhone 12. Windows 10 running on an Android smartphone? It is possible that soon we will see it come true. Developers at the Windows 10 for ARM project were able to get the dual screen to work properly on the Lumia 950 XL smartphone, which means that smartphone features remain fully functional while also running a desktop version of Windows 10. I wish these devs a great success. That right there is my ultimate dream. To have one device that runs both mobile and desktop OS and they should be fully integrated. Otherwise, what are we doing with these extremely powerful devices in our pockets? iPhone 12 will be more powerful than most common laptops. It is time to utilize that performance properly. I really hope that Microsoft and Apple will bring this functionality to smartphones soon. I am probably asking for too much though. Developers working on the next Middle Earth game named Lord of the Rings Gollum have released a teaser. We don't know much about this action-adventure game that is going to take us back to the Middle-earth. I just hope that they won't mess it up with microtransactions as it happened with Shadow of War. The gameplay experience was terrible in that game. I had no desire to play it. Ended up watching all the cutscenes on YouTube to find out how the story ended. Because I actually finished Shadow of Mordor and enjoyed it a lot. I would give it 9 out of 10. Very good game. That is all for today. Comment, like, subscribe and turn on the notifications by clicking on the bell icon so you won't miss the next episode. Check out other recommended videos that I will put on the screen now. Until next time, Vadim out.